You remember the four pillars Paul is building his theology of Israel upon? His love for Israel, the wealth, the riches of Israel, the sovereignty of the living God, and the one exclusive way to salvation. And what Paul now does in Romans 10 verse 14 and the beginning of verse 15, it is, if you, if you have in mind the picture of the, the river and the stones, it's the first stone and the river, is a five-fold, how do I say, chain of thoughts. I just want to read it to you. It's Romans 10, verse 14. He says, But how can they call on someone in whom they do not believe? You remember they come from whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved? Now they say, but how can they call on somebody, on someone in whom they do not believe? How shall they have a trusting relationship, belief, faith, with somebody of whom they have never heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? You see, this is, this is a, in the end fivefold, but we have the first four parts of the chain to call upon in order to be saved, to believe, to know to whom to call upon, yeah, to hear, to know him, and to preach in order to hear. Now let me be very clear here. Paul does not say that they um, have never heard of him. He does not say that they never called upon him. He wants to show us a principle that is very, very crucial and very often overlooked in Christian circles when it comes to preaching. And please do know, do remember that I said last time, we have to make this distinction between Jew and Gentile. As far as I know, and I would put that up for a con well, make everyone who, who, who listens to this read the Bible and come up and show me that I am not right. As far as I see, this is the only text in the Bible that is addressed to Gentiles, to non-Jews, and talks about preaching to the Jews. So if we as Gentiles want to come and preach to Jews, we have to start with this text. All of the texts are either addressed to Jews and talking to, 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 to talk to Gentiles or to Jews to talk to Jews or to Gentiles to talk to Gentiles. This is the only text, as far as I know, that talks explicitly to Gentiles about preaching to Jews. Now, we have to agree what this word to preach means. Kerisen in Greek. It is not what we often think, a kind of public development of more or less private thoughts or experiences of insights, findings, and opinions. So I come and say, oh, I have these and these thoughts. I know. It is not a discussion among other discussions with the currents and opinions of the zeitgeist, of, of, of what with all the world talks about. A kerix, and I use here specifically the Greek word, because we have afterwards in this text also translation to preach, and there is another Greek word being used. A kerix who does the kerisin, a, a, a preacher who does the preaching, originally is a herald who has to proclaim or to declare the emperor's will. The herald's personal opinion is completely uninteresting. The message is to convey not a private matter, but if the emperor wants to say something to his people, it is binding for them. 
And whosoever is not willing to hear must answer to the emperor, not to the clerics, to the pre preacher. And it's not up to the preacher to proclaim what is on his mind or what has become important to him when he met the emperor and how it looks and whatever. But he simply has to convey the message but without taking everything, anything away, without adding anything. And you know, therefore, for this preacher, it's not important whether he is gifted. It's not important whether he has studied. It's not important even how he looks, whether he is acceptable and talks a, I don't know, blameless English or whatever. But, and that's what Paul is emphasizing here, the crux is, the all decisive question is, how can somebody preach unless he is sent? You know, there are people who come to me and say, oh, I know what it's all about. And I want to tell the Jewish people that they have to accept Jesus. What shall I do? How shall I do it? They come and ask me. And I tell people, make sure you are sent. If you are not sent, it's much better you shut up than saying even the slightest word. You know, I even told somebody, do it like Jonah, run away. And if the Lord really sent you to preach, in this case to Israel, to the Jewish people, or to Nineveh, in Jonah's case, if you're really sent to preach, the Lord will have today his, I don't know, his big fishes, <laughs> his whales, who will vomit you into the, the right direction. But woe us if the Lord has to say about us what Jeremiah has to say about prophets. And I'm quoting here Jeremiah 23. Um, it is the Lord who says there, you call this word burden of the Lord, although I sent to you and said to you, do not say, burden of the Lord. Behold, I will lift you up as a burden and cast you away from my presence along with the city that I gave to you and your fathers, and I will inflict upon you eternal shame and everlasting reproach, which shall never be forgotten. God takes it very, very serious. Very serious. If people come up and say, I have the message, and I tell you, the decisive thing is, are we sent? And you know, it strikes me over and over again that even Messiah Yeshua, when he saw that the fields are white for harvest, he didn't tell his disciples, now, guys, you know who is the solution of the problem. You have understood it. You see it. Go and tell them. Yeshua himself, and that's the last verses of Matthew 9, if I'm not mistaken. Yeshua himself says in great humility, ask the Lord of the harvest the master of the harvest, to send out harvesters. We have to be very careful, and I would like to emphasize it, it's better to run away than to try to convince people of something you think that is right, and in truth, as a matter of fact, you have never been sent by the Lord who is the only one to send us.